the, the monetary policy and whether they are going to succeed in killing inflation. And, Not and bringing it down to 2% for a month or two, but killing inflation. Well, the markets are expecting a pause in March. They're expecting to get a little around, you know, 5% yeah. and then hold steady. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, I mean, to get to the market, if I may, that's one of the reasons that I've been saying for uh, 10 days now that I think gold is vulnerable to a pullback because the market is so convinced is 25 basis points and a pause in March. If Powell comes out, Powell doesn't like the fact that the stock market is continuing to go up, right. which means the stock market is not taking him seriously. And so his incentive, I think, his incentive is to come out and say something strong. Mm -hmm. But we're going to keep on with this job until inflation's defeated, blah, 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 blah. He's not going to say we're not going to raise rates in March. He's not going to say that, sure. I don't think. So you're saying that in a way, the market telegraphing what he is going to do and reflecting positivity and general sentiment is nullifying some of the impact of what Absolutely. Powell is trying to do. And then he may up the ante exactly. with his rhetoric in order to shock the market back into, well, maybe we don't know, maybe it could still be a more severe rate hike than, no, than expected. Absolutely, absolutely. And as you say, Powell and the Fed, this Fed in particular under Powell is very data dependent. They look at the data very closely. And so the GDP number will say to them, hmm, maybe we can keep hiking a little bit longer. Right, because it is a relatively healthy GDP yes. number, which could embolden them to really absolutely. crank it up a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and as you say, this may be problematic for gold because you think that a sort of softer Fed is already priced into the gold price? I think the Fed is uh, gold, sorry. The gold market is already priced in 25 basis points and very few people have any question about that. And it's, it's already priced in a pause in March, I think. Okay. So, so it's vulnerable on the downside. In, in the near term, because in gold just term. breached, what, uh, 1920? Yeah. Um, it's around that level now. Are you ready to call a bottom, though, for gold for 2023? Oh, 100%. oh for 20, we saw the bottom in October, September, October. We've already seen the bottom. Of, of that, I'm very strong. Of this recent run, because we're up about yes. 18% since that. In but. gold, yeah. 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 And, and the gold stock's up nearly 40%, 35%, 40%. What is your bottom call for gold per ounce at the moment? What, bottom? Your, your bottom line, you don't see gold dropping below this uh, oh. support level. You know, we could, oh gosh, I, I'm, I'm, that's not the way I look at markets, I'm sorry. We could easily get back to 1870, it wouldn't bother me. Okay. 1870, 1880, if, if Powell comes out swinging. <laughs> um, because, the, again, because the gold market is already priced in a pause. And so should investors then be allocating more than the traditional 5 or 10% of their portfolio to gold? Yeah, five to ten percent to me is for physical insurance, right? It's for physical insurance. We're not talking about buying Moose Pasture Inc. That's not part of your five percent. So yes, I think you need much more than five to ten percent in gold assets. In gold exposure. Yes. And absolutely. that means what exactly? Gold ETFs, gold miners. What, what specifically? It, it means whatever a person's comfortable with, yes. I mean, I think 5 to 10% in physical as insurance in your own grubby hands is is the safest, is is the base. In terms of 10% yeah. gold coins stored somewhere for kicker. safe, yes. or from anywhere, <laughs> uh, saved under my bed. And we are buying, um, well, don't tell us where you keep it, <laughs> but but right now my, my focus continues to be on the senior stocks both the miners and the royalty companies, uh, because those are the surest, those are the, sh the first to move and the surest to move. Already the XAU's up, you know, over 35%, 36%, 37% since the lows in October. Um, but those stocks still have much more room to move in the near term, I think. So I, my focus continues to be on the seniors, right? Because the new months, the barracks. Yeah, because they're the surest to move. You know, okay. um, but I also think now 
now is really the time to also start adding the juniors and the exploration companies. The exploration companies are stupidly cheap right now as a group, as a group. Um, the problem, of course, is that you have to be much more discerning about what you buy. And the volatility is, a, not only is the volatility higher, but uh, the risk of, of certain companies just not performing is much higher. Are yes, there any that you particularly have identified as having potential on the upside? Yes. Can you share those with us? <laughs> um, well, I think Midland, for example, which is one I'd like to lot, Midland Exploration, which is a, a, a prospect generator in um, Quebec with joint ventures with BHP, Rio, Soquim, Osisco, Agnigo, you know, all of the cream of a crop in the mining business is extraordinarily cheap right now. Good quality management, good balance sheet. Um, they just need, you know, a big discovery and success, which as we know in this business can take many, many years, but they're certainly set up for success and they're cheap. And they're at the show. Um, Orion is another one we like a lot. I don't know if they're at the show, frankly, um, but Orion, um, there's, there's several I like. Adrian, is there anything that could derail your overall thesis here in terms of S&P going down 20%, gold hitting an all-time high? Is there any kind of development that jeopardizes the, the, how your thesis plays out? Well, obviously two different things would derail each, each one, although in my mind they're interrelated in the scenario I see. I mean, clearly, if, if, if Jerome Powell and the Fed just continues to rate hikes, uh, to continues to hike rates, um, uh, you know, month after month, that, that would derail the gold bull market. I, I, I don't see that, um, but, but that would certainly derail the gold bull market. And from the S&P 500? You know, a pivot. I don't think we're going to get a pivot. A pivot meaning they're going to stop and reverse. Touch, touch yes. Yeah, not a pause, a pivot going backwards. Yes. I don't what think what, what about it. on the geopolitical front? What if there is some kind of diplomatic resolution to the Russia-Ukraine crisis yeah, soon? I, I don't think gold has priced in. I don't think that. I don't think that's more than a dollar or two f in the gold price. You know, geopolitical developments tend to have very short-lived event, uh, a very short impact on the price of gold. And in terms um, of market sentiment at large, if there is resolution to the conflict, which is escalating and amping up with the U.S. and Germany sending tanks, yeah. it's certainly not moving in that no, no. direction. And now there's talk of Ukraine wanting F-16s. So we go from tanks to F-16s. Someone's yeah. got to fly those planes. So they're not there yet, but no, no. certainly the indicators are not for a diplomatic resolution, but let's be hopeful, let's be optimistic. Should there be one, what does that mean for the markets, do you think? Well, I think there'd be a short-term drop in the price of oil, because right. presumably sanctions on oil would, would be lifted very quickly, because the West needs Russian oil. So there'd be a short-term drop in the price of oil. That would be a buying opportunity, frankly, because mm -hmm. uh, I think the fundamentals for oil are, are remarkably strong, regardless of, of Russia. Um, that would probably boost the S and P a little bit in the short term, but it's all sentiment. I don't. I don't think. I don't think the Russia conflict is first and foremost in people's minds right now when they're buying gold or deciding not to buy gold. That is not what they're thinking about. So I think. I think it would be a psychological, short-term sentiment impact. All right. And what should investors be thinking about when buying gold? The, the interest rate environment? The, the, the monetary policy and whether they are going to succeed in killing inflation. And, Not and bringing it down to 2% for a month or two, but killing inflation.